The information in today's show is the viewpoint of the guest and is not sponsored or approved by Lifestyle Magazine. On today's show, we'll hear about an alternative treatment for getting rid of chronic pain and illness. Now, here's Mike and Gail. Dr. Alan Goldhammer is the founder of True North Health Center and director of the center's groundbreaking residential health education program, one of the premier training facilities for doctors wishing to gain certification in the supervision of the therapeutic use of fasting. We also have with us our friend, physician, nutrition expert, and author, Dr. John McDougall. Welcome to both of you. Well, Welcome. thank you. Glad to Good have to you have. here. You know, this is a real honor for me to have is Dr. Right? Goldhammer here. He's been my friend and co-worker for almost, well, certainly 25 years. That's wonderful. And uh, I have to say, when I have tough cases, yeah. problems I can't solve, I send them off to True North. To is take that care. right? Ah. It's not an exaggeration for Dr. Goldhammer to take care of, because he has uh, an extremely effective therapy that... Uh, you know, basically helps everybody. That's wonderful. Yeah. Dr. All Goldhammer, right. that's high praise coming from this man. Yes, it, it really is. is. We want to talk about uh, fasting. So what is a therapeutic fast? Well, when we talk about fasting, we're talking about something that's the complete abstinence of all substances except pure water administered in an environment of complete rest. Wow. So oh. you're truly only consuming water during this time? During fasting, the only thing that goes in is water uh -huh. in a resting state. How long? Fasts in our clinic range from five days to 40 days. Five days to 40 days? Seriously? Absolutely. Okay, I, I don't want to go to your clinic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but Gail, I mean, if you were dealing with something like uh, intractable high blood pressure exactly. or, uh, you know, serious heart disease or a lifelong weight problem you could dealt, I mean, there are things worse than life than getting the problem solved. That's right. Yeah. Well, and help what us Dr. Goldhammer offers is a huge boost in getting people in that direction. It's not like you fast forever. Right. Okay, well, well, yeah, help that's us good. understand <laughs> why and how and all those things. Well, fasting is a very powerful uh, intervention. It gives the, it's very much like taking a computer and shutting it down and rebooting the hard okay. drive. It mm -hmm. clears a lot of things out. It takes longer to reboot a human. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that have problems that, that um, will respond to diet and lifestyle change, but they respond slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, many people are on medications that, although the medications are causing them untoward effects, they have trouble getting off the medications. Sure. There are people that want to make diet and lifestyle changes, but they don't like the foods at first because they're so used to the oil, salt, sugar, and artificial stimulation right. of their systems. With fasting, it gives the body a chance to shut all that stuff down, reboot the system. Mm. Good foods start to taste good. It's possible to more rapidly allow the body to make the changes that it would occur naturally over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. It allows us to um, safely withdraw people from medications and eliminate some of the inflammatory processes that create the pain that gets them into the trouble to begin with. So mm -hmm. there's a, a variety of conditions that respond very well to this type of approach. But what's interesting is most of those conditions that respond the best mm -hmm. are the very condition caused by dietary excess. Oh, okay. Makes sense. So when people are developing these, as Dr. McDougall says, the diseases of kings, mm -hmm. the coronary artery disease with the high blood pressure, the diabetes, and many of the autoimmune diseases, things like lupus, mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative wow. colitis, these conditions that are so uh, non-responsive to conventional care mm -hmm. uh, respond very well to conservative care with things like fasting and then, of course, adopting a starch-based diet. In our um, particular clinic, we carry it a little bit further in the sense that we also eliminate all the sugar, oil, and salt from the diet, right. which, is, which is even a yeah. little bit more restrictive. But for our patients, for example, with high blood pressure, sometimes they don't process uh, or handle as well even the normal amounts of sodium that would be uh, included in, in, a, in a normal uh -huh. diet. Uh -huh. okay. And obviously, if you're going to fast from 5 to 40 days, this needs to be under supervision. Yes, it does. Patients have to be appropriately selected. This isn't for everybody. Okay, so I shouldn't just go home and stop eating for five days. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend uh, uh, water-only fasting uh, for people that have, haven't had the benefit of a proper history exam and right. appropriate monitoring. Okay. Okay. Um, it also helps to do it in a controlled setting that's designed to provide support for people. Right. When it's done properly, it is safe and effective, but it easily can be misused or inappropriately used in resulting in some untoward effects. And, of course, you also mentioned that it's... It, 
the absence of, the absence of food, but also in an environment of rest? Yeah, it's important because uh, when you fast, the body goes through a natural, this is a biological adaptation. Human beings are designed to be able to fast. Were it not for our ability as a species to be able to fast, our species couldn't have survived. Hmm. We have a large bulbous neuronal net at the end of our spinal column called the brain. <laughs> and it's our biggest burner of <laughs> glucose or sugar. Mm -hmm. yes. And our normal fuel is sugar. Yeah. In fasting, it's a very unique situation for humans is that we change fuels. Our brain literally switches from burning primarily glucose to burning ketones, which are a byproduct of fat metabolism. Okay. So in water fasting, we're burning mostly fat. fat. Now the problem is, when you rest, your body's able to meet its baseline glucose needs by minimizing gluconeogenesis, which is the process of breaking down proteins. If you increase your activity, though, right. you'll double your caloric utilization and you'll increase concomitantly your protein utilization. Okay. So if you're too active in fasting, you'll end up burning more sugar, i.e. more protein, yeah. which is not what we're trying to do. No. We want to conserve our protein stores, burn our fat stores. The best way to do that is to rest. So that takes place in your clinic then? It does. We have a clinic where patients are able to come. They live with us. They're monitored twice a day by our staff doctors. We do the appropriate laboratory monitoring. And while they're there, we do an intense educational program so they learn how to eat, how to exercise, what and why to, why to do uh, yeah. these lifestyle habits. You're singing the same song as this guy over here when it comes to the diet. Well, that's where the song came from. It was <laughs> my exposure to reading originally his book, The McDougal Plan, yeah. was where all this started to inculcate in my brain uh -huh. what, was, what was really happening. And, of course, now he's got a new book, which I'm hoping is going to shift the, the, the talk back to the truth, which is that people need to eat a starch-based mm -hmm. uh, vegan diet that's, that's health-promoting and not pretend that they can indulge their their pleasure traps and still, uh, and still achieve health. And still achieve health. We're going to take a break and we'll, we'll be right back after this. Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. Alan Goldhammer and Dr. John McDougall about the health benefits of water only fasting. Now John, before we went to break, you said you wanted to make a point here. Yeah, I, I think it's important for people to understand that this is an extremely effective and an extremely safe therapy, water fasting is. Just like, you know, changing to a healthy diet is extremely effective and extremely safe. It's just people aren't familiar with it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you should do these things under a proper setting, but the main reason is, is these people come in toxic with doctor's medications. They come in with these bagfuls of pills and that's where they get into trouble is if you're on blood pressure pills and you do something like eat a good diet or fast that lowers blood pressure in itself, then you're on all these medications. You could become hypotensive or low blood sugar. So the danger comes in the fact that these people come in, come in to us, mm -hmm. Dr. Goldhammer's mm -hmm. case, fasting, my, my case, you know, feeding them good foods. Uh -huh. They come in with this bag full of drugs that is, that is literally poisoning them. And so they need to have help stopping the medications, which in, I think I'll let Dr. Goldhammer speak for himself, but in my case, it's generally stop those drugs. Yeah. Like day yeah. one, stop those drugs. Yeah. And we stop, there are a few exceptions, we stop but, almost everything day but one. But they need a safe way to do that, and, they, and you provide that. They need to be in a that. setting, yes, where they're supervised, but it's, uh, Gail, I don't stop worrying about my patients when I take care of them until they're off the medications. Otherwise, I don't sleep well at night mm -hmm. until I get them off the drugs, and then I mm -hmm. feel good because I know they're okay. Mm -hmm. It's the drugs that get you in trouble when you try and be healthy or do a fast. Dr. Goldhammer, I see you nodding in approval of this. Well, you know, that's exactly right. The complications aren't the conditions so much as the treatment that the patient's been under and unwinding that treatment is where sometimes it, there's a little bit of delicacy. Right, you guys are making it sound like that uh, we've gone back to medieval times and we're, we're, uh, we're bleeding patients and as soon as we stop the doctor's intervention we're going to all get better. Well and it's interesting people are sometimes shocked at the idea that we uh, purposely have people go for up to 40 days on water only. They think that it's just Moses, David, Elijah, and Jesus in, yeah. in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Did this, but, exactly. but it turns out there you that go. This, <laughs> this is an ancient practice that's recognized by virtually every religious tradition on it the is. planet. It is. And all we've done is take this ancient practice and applied modern monitoring mm -hmm. techniques so that we can do it safely and effectively. I've been doing this with patients for over 30 years. We've had 10,000 
people with a variety of conditions go through this unwinding process. Mm -hmm. What fasting does is it lets the body do what it does best, and that's heal itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all we're trying to do is intelligently get out of the way and allow the body to resolve these underlying conditions, most of which we've caused because of dietary excess, because of the choices we've made, yeah. we cause these conditions. And many of the people that we're, we're treating, they're actually being medicated not for their condition, but for their diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. McDougall said, as soon as you begin changing the diet, the need for the medications is modified. Mm -hmm. And as you eliminate the medications, you reduce the risk factors, not increase the risk factors. So what are those conditions that are, that are affected by this fast? The, the, the people that we um, have the most experience with are people that have high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, diabetes. and a whole host of autoimmune disorders. Okay. So we we're, we're talk about lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis and eczema, psoriasis, asthma, these conditions that are all made worse by our dietary choices and all made better by improving the diet. What we've done with our use of fasting is to allow us to access people that either on their own are unsuccessful at making diet changes or despite their best efforts are still suffering oftentimes as a consequence of their medical management. Hmm. So we bring them in a controlled setting and we basically undo all that's been done, give the body a chance to reboot itself. And what's amazing is the consistency with the, the, of the results that we see. It's very predictable. If a patients are appropriately selected, the results are very predictable and reproducible. So this may not be for every disease or every person. It's certainly not. Okay. But Just most. Yeah. <laughs> Just most. And you know why the uh, fasting therapy and uh, dietary therapy, which Dr. Goldhammer has been using for many years, is not popular? Why? It's not profitable. <laughs> it, but, you know, it's plain and simple. It comes down to that. If you could make the kind of money you make off statins mm -hmm. or other drugs off of feeding people potatoes or fasting them, uh, this would be this would be mainstream therapy every place. Uh -huh. But because, <clears throat> I mean, how much do, money do you make feeding people water, Mike, yeah. <laughs> or, or potatoes? <laughs> you see, that's the problem. There, the truth brings no money, yeah. no profits, and money brings the message. And, and that's, that's all there is to it. There's nothing else on the table. It's not like these drugs work, you know, for chronic disease. They plain and simple don't work. It's been proven. Every doctor in your listening audience knows that the bulk of our treatments are toxic and do not work when it comes to chronic diseases. This is no mystery. Yeah. You won't find a single doctor, doctor that will argue that point of view. The problem is, is the money is just so huge you can continue to sell well-meaning people like your physician ineffective and toxic drugs because there's so much money in it. So we know that the fasting for most of these these situations it, it has an immediate effect. When you begin to monitor that effect in your clinic, you see people change, you see the diseases begin to 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 go away. At the end of the fast, uh, how do you get them back to eating proper food? Well, of course, now? this is the most important part of the whole process is that people go through fasting and then they have to learn to and then begin to eat healthfully yes. mm -hmm. because it's diet, sleep, and exercise that are going to determine their overall yeah. ability to maintain health. And what we do is we gradually reintroduce the very foods that we want them eating. After uh, uh, water-only fasting, we usually start with fresh fruit and vegetable juices for a day or two just to get the system mm -hmm. fired up. And then we introduce fruits and salads and steamed starchy vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so patients are eating uh, exactly the diets that are laid out in Dr. McDougall's book, The Starch Solution. But the advantage is now they've gone through this fasting and good foods taste good. So it changes mm -hmm. the taste buds. The, even. There's actually what's called neuroadaptation. The actual um, uh, responsiveness of the taste buds changes. Foods that were not interesting before fasting often taste very good. People that are used to eating large amounts of salt and fat on their diets that, that consider the food tasteless swill at first, mm -hmm. either after they've been eating it for a while and they adjust, or with fasting, they adjust very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Now they can tolerate the food. Yeah. All right. They actually like well, just it. Just so I don't get undue credit, yeah. this happens to be the di diet of Daniel. It does. It yes. does. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's, it's biblical, and while. the fasting is biblical as well. It, it, you it, know, it, anyone why, who's a why religious why practitioner has done why, this. Why oh, yes. isn't your entire Christian audience or, yeah. you know, listening, viewing audience, why aren't they jumping all over this and saying, look, I know this is true. Yeah. This is all my yeah. teachings, all my religion. Mm -hmm. Why do I, I take and believe in doctors and in the medical business and the drug companies? When the I, Bible is, is told you. Yeah. This is faith-based medicine, Mike. We have faith-based medicine. They believe in these people because it doesn't work, and they've got the good book 
which they're supposed to believe in, which they discount when it comes to good foods and fat. I don't get well, it. I think for most people, it's not that they don't believe it in Christian community. It's that they think it's too difficult because it's well, not what they're Maybe it's too simple. And, and i got to take a break right now. I have to interrupt the evangelist uh, John over here, but I do agree with you. We're going to be right back after this. Stay tuned for more Lifestyle Magazine. Welcome back. We're talking today with Dr. Alan Goldhammer and Dr. John McDougall, and we want to talk a little bit about the pleasure trap, because I think that connects to what we were just saying about how people find it difficult to make changes that they already know they should make. Well, I think this is one of the most difficult things people ever do in their lifetime, is to try to adopt a health-promoting diet in a world designed to make them fat, sick, and miserable. Because out there, the forces of evil are designed to give you what you want, not what you need. What yeah. you want is how can I continue to do and indulge in these bad habits and these addictions mm -hmm. and not have to pay the price. What you I need, enjoy them. Absolutely. Right? And in that fact, pill doesn't exist, does it? <laughs> the, the, the reality is that just like drugs like alcohol and cocaine artificially stimulate dopamine in the brain and they yes. induce a pleasure response and people become addicted, there are chemicals that we begin to add to our food that do exactly the same thing. Really? It's the reason why people are fat, sick, and miserable is because we're putting chemicals in our food that force us to overeat. If we put these chemicals in the food, for example, of rats, they'll gain 49% of their weight in 60 days. If you really? put it in the feet of birds, they'll get so fat they can't fly. And in humans, those chemicals are oil, salt, and sugar. Wow. These, these chemicals don't exist in that concentrated form in nature. We process materials in order to get them. We put them in our foodstuffs, mm -hmm. and we feed ourselves a diet that's not at all natural. Yeah. And we think it's natural because it's common. So oil, fat, and sugar, that's what you said. Yeah, when we add oil, uh, salt, and sugar in a concentrated form sugar. to food, it allows us to eat foods that we wouldn't normally eat particularly There's, animal products yeah. and highly processed carbohydrates. So, yeah. you know, the trick is to go back to eating the foods that we're designed to eat, fruits yeah. and vegetables uh, and, and, and uh, potatoes, rice and beans. Yeah. And then we will get oil, salt and sugar, but we will get them in natural ways and in proper yeah. quantities. Well, you'll get all the carbohydrates and all the sodium that you need naturally in the naturally. foods. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you take a, f uh, a food, for example, and rip it apart and take out one component like oil, and particularly then you heat it at high temperature and you cook foods in it. That's not the same thing as getting the, the natural oil that you would in, in eating whole natural say, foods. In, say, almonds or something or whatever. So, so this ends up being essentially a hidden force that un it's undermining people's health and happiness. They don't recognize it. They don't see it. One of the things that fasting does is it allows people to reboot that system. Mm -hmm. So all we're really doing is essentially treating addicts. So we recognize it with alcoholism or cigarette smoking or coffee. And by the way, for example, cigarette smokers that go through water fasting have very little withdrawal effects. Really? Within just really? a few days, they're free of their addictions. They're able because to, they've so cleaned it, their system out. It's actually out. able to help with the addictions that people have with, uh, with alcohol, with, with tobacco. When, when people start drinking alcohol, at first they, they drink because it makes them feel good, because it stimulates yeah. dopamine in the brain. Eventually, they can become addicted to the substance. Now they're drinking to not feel bad. Mm -hmm. go through the, the same thing happens to people when they artificially stimulate dopamine in their brain from these chemicals in their food. They eat the foods to feel good. It makes them taste good. It stimulates the dopamine response. Eventually, if they don't eat it, they feel bad. They mm -hmm. have to eat it. They mm -hmm. have to eat sometimes every few hours. They have to mm -hmm. wake up at night and eat it because they're addicts. Yeah. Now, sometimes if you can just get people to eat well, just like sometimes if you can get people to just stop drinking, yeah. mm -hmm. they can get free of the addiction. Mm -hmm. um, but some people can't seem to do it on their own. Right. They, they have trouble giving up their cigarettes or their coffee or their alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so we have programs designed to help people mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, we offer one of those kinds of programs. Mm -hmm. Only in this case, it's not just getting off cigarettes and alcohol and other drugs. It's also getting off the chemicals we add to the food, the type of foods that we eat that we become addicted to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if it's too difficult for people to quit on their own and just adopt uh, a McDougal style diet, mm -hmm. they can come spend some time with us where we literally create a contained environment and help them go through that process more efficiently. give them a jump start. And then they go back on exactly the same diet that we want people on right. under normal circumstances. So it's, it's very much equivalent to helping, say for example, alcoholics uh, kick drinking. Sure. Mm -hmm. If they can't do it on their own, we create an environment where it's a little bit easier right. to make it happen. Makes total right. sense. Rehab clinic. <laughs> yeah. well, and that's basically what you're running in, in that sense. I mean, if we were talking about getting off the addiction that we have to, to those pleasurable foods. People don't want to see themselves as addicts, though, because yeah. they drink coffee or because yeah. they uh, eat these highly processed foods. But mm -hmm. the reality is they are addicted in every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. These foods are just as destructive as heroin. 
Yeah. I mean, you're talking about people dying of heart disease, uh, women losing their breasts. Yes. Uh, you know, we're talking about diseases at least as damaging to a person and their family and society as heroin or alcohol or anything else. It's just that, you know, it's just that firemen feed their families meat and dairy, mm -hmm. and ministers feed their families meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. I mean, nice people yeah, good kill their families with meat and dairy. Normal and acceptable. It's just normal behavior. But uh -huh. the, the pain is just as serious as whether it's caused with alcohol or tobacco or heroin or food. You know, losing your father, yeah. you know, having your mother disfigured, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, losing your sister. I mean, these are just as painful whether they came from food or from alcohol or something Absolutely. else. Yeah. And, but we don't, ra we don't uh, face up to that yet, but we're going to. Yeah. You know, they're, they're yeah. people, are, people are starting to do it, and it's getting exciting they for are. somebody it's to have an option. It's starting to spread, isn't it? In some way, it's even more insidious. At least with drug addicts, they realize, okay, well, this stuff isn't good for me. I should quit. Yeah. With yes. the food, they think they're doing the right thing. They're giving this food purposely to their children yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they think this, this is, is the food that they need. This is what yeah. we need. All right. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you. This is it's revolutionary, and yet yeah. it's old. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's old. It's been around. Old but new. The, the, truth old but is, new. the truth has been around a while. It's a long time. Simple to understand too. Yeah. We'll be back with a final word right after this. Lifestyle magazine. We'll be right back. We've had a great conversation today about therapeutic fasting, and Dr. Goldhammer, how would someone decide if this is the right thing for them? Well, I think if people remember that health is the result of healthful living that it's healthful living that's the foundation of all of the things that are important here. Mm -hmm. If they're having trouble implementing the kind of recommendations that they would read about, for example, in the McDougal uh, starch solution, mm -hmm. if they can't do it on their own, that's the person that may benefit for getting a little extra help at implementing these uh, time-tested approaches to regaining health. Diet, sleep, exercise, that's got to be that the focus. That makes sense. So if you, they can't, are time -tested. you can't do what you know you should do on your own, maybe you need some help. Absolutely. Right but look into it and be supervised about it. Yeah, John? Well, I, I agree. It's a great way to learn a new diet is to not eat for a while. But the other thing is there are some problems out there that are a bit of a mystery when you first look at them. And there's nothing like uh, fasting to sort out where those problems come from. Some of these uh, inflammatory, inflammatory arthritis, these autoimmune diseases, or, you know, people just feel bad and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. Nothing like some water for a few days to see at least that you can get well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of sort out what the foods are. So it's a tremendous tool for people. And it costs nothing. Yeah. That's right. Gentlemen, and there's no, tie, no side effects. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate the information you're giving. It's helpful and it's valuable for us. We all need to hear it. Thank you for being a part of this one as well. We look forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. In his latest book, The Starch Solution, Dr. John McDougall reveals the surprising benefits of a starch-based diet. Be sure to call today for your free excerpt or visit lifestyle.org.